Welcome to Fine Art for All. My name is Barbara Mendes. Tonight we're going to look at the Shemot mural, which is behind me, which tells everything that there is to tell in the biblical book of Exodus. We're also going to see a roll-in that I've made showing the story of the creation of this 12-foot mural. And we're also going to have a segment called Now We Paint, where I work on a picture I began on the first Fine Art for All, and I'm actually going to paint here in the studio. So let's begin looking at the Shemot mural. The mural tells the story of the entire book of Shemot, and it begins on this corner with the story of Moses. Now, in the, he in the Jewish life, we discuss one section of the Bible every week in synagogue, and the mural is divided into the 11 parishes or sections. The first one is called Shemot, the same name as the mural. Now, the book of Exodus in the Bible begins with these words. It says, these are the names of Jacob's sons who came down to Egypt. And here we see at the top of the mural, these are the names, these are Jacob's sons. Now, these names are very significant. And I'd like you to know, what does the word Shemot, this Hebrew name, which is Shin, Mem, Vav, Tav, what does it really mean? It doesn't mean Exodus, it means names. And why does it mean names? Because this word appears in the first sentence. These are the names of the people came down to Egypt. And they are the names of the 12 tribes. So I've put these names around the edge of the big word and they're going to be very important later on. Now the Shemot mural, after coming down to Egypt, it tells the story of the birth of Moses. And here we see him on the river and we see Pharaoh's daughter pulling him out of the river. And later on, Moses is brought up by the Egyptians, but he goes out and sees the trouble of his people, and he kills a man and he has to leave. Then he sees Yitro's daughter, and he helps her with her, with her sheep because the other shepherds are bothering her. And he marries Yitro's daughter, but then he sets off with his sheep and he sees a burning bush. And from the burning bush, God speaks to Moshe, and he tells him that he will be leading his people out of Egypt. Now, in the next parasha, Vayera, he meets his... First, we learn the lineage of Moshe, Moses and Aaron, Moshe and Aharon, and this part shows their lineage. Then Moses and Aaron go before Pharaoh, and they say the famous words, let my people go. But of course, he doesn't, and then the first plagues begin, and we have the plague of the blood in the Nile, the plague of the frogs, the lice, the wild beasts. Up here in the next parasha, Bo, we get to the really bad plagues. Now, in this mural, there's a special system of word balloons when people speak, but one entity that speaks a lot in, in Sefer Shemot, the book of Exodus, is God, whom we refer to as Hashem, the name. Every time God speaks, it's a special word balloon with special dots. So in this part, God is telling Moses what's going to happen on the night of Passover, the night that Jewish people leave Egypt. Here, Moses is telling the Jewish people, and here it's really happening with the darkness and then the death of the firstborn. And then it's tiny in the mural, but it's an awesome scene when the Jewish people really leave Egypt and the Exodus gets underway. In the next parasha, Beishalach, we have the famous crossing of the Red Sea. We have the splitting of the Red Sea and the Egyptians are mired in the mud. They can't even follow. And the Israelites escape. And when they get to the other side, they sing a beautiful song, which is the song of the sea. And in synagogues all around the world, on Shabbat, on Saturday, we sing this to a beautiful melody. Now, many things happen in, in Beishalach. I call it the Parsha without end. They continue farther. They have one very nice campground with palms. And then they get the bread from heaven, the manna. And also, they hit a well. They learn about Shabbat for the first time also in this Parsha. They get water from a well, and at the very end, a, Mel a Malek, one of our enemies, attacks. And then we get to Yitro, which is named for Moses' father-in-law, who comes to visit him and tells him that he's spending too much time judging. He has to pick judges to, to, um, to judge the people, and he has more important things to do. And what he does is he goes up Har Sinai, Mount Sinai, which is smoke and fire and the sound of the shofar, and he receives the Ten Commandments. And here we see these word balloons coming down with the special dots showing that it's God speaking. And we have the Ten Commandments between man and God. These are the first five and the second five between man and man. And the way I showed a negative commandment, such as this one, do not kill, was to show somebody doing it and then getting zapped from heaven. In the next parasha, Mishpatim, which means justice, we learn all about the civil laws of how men get along together. And the entire parasha is one word balloon. God is speaking to Moses on the mountain out of the fire. And he tells them all the laws of uh, a slave man or a slave woman, how they're allowed to go free, how they may have to marry the boss's, the boss's son or, and all the laws, if there's any injury 
or if there's any theft, there's damages, sometimes there's capital punishment. I would not suggest you hit your mother because it's a capital punishment. And also many of the other laws of Judaism, such as the laws of the Shemitah year, and many other laws are in Mishpatim, the civil laws. Now, I tell the school children, what happens in Parashat Truma? Nothing, because it's all God speaking to Moses. Up in the cloud, up in the mountain, he's telling Moses. But what is he telling him? What we will be doing when we build the tabernacle? And what we will be building at out of the important things that go inside it, such as the altar and the aron with the ark with the angels on the top of it. And of course, the menorah and the shulhan, the table of showbreads, and how everything will be made from pure gold, and how they'll make the curtains. Now, when we say the word wool, we know it comes from a sheep. But in the mural, I show them shearing the sheep and spinning the wool and dyeing the wool and carrying it over here to the ladies to weave the special curtains of the tabernacle, the mishkan, which will be a dwelling place for God on the earth. And also the shittim, the acacia wood that we brought with us, is used to construct it. Now, in Tetzave, God is still telling Moses, he's telling him about the making of the priestly garments. Now, the priest wore a, blessed, a breastplate that had 12 stones on it. And the letters on the stones had the names of the 12 tribes on them. And these names would light up in a special magical way whenever the Jewish people had a question to ask of God. The high priest would look at his breastplate, and certain letters would light up. And these are the letters you see. And they would figure out the answer to that. And these are the rest of the priestly garments, the tunic and the special little pomegranates on the bottom, and more details of building and anointing, all the things that will go in the altar, in the uh, mishkan, the tabernacle. Fine. Now Moses is up there. God is still talking to him, and he's telling him how he's going to make the incense out of special spices and special oil to anoint all the special things that go in the temple. Again, the menorah, the washing basement, the table, the altar, the incense altar. Finally, God stops speaking, and Moses comes down from the mountain. But what does he see? The golden calf. And he gets very angry, and he breaks the tablets, and a lot of things happen. And in some places in this mural, it had to be very tiny, even though it's very awesome subject matter. Now, in Vayakhel, it's exciting to me, the artist, because we're really going to build the tabernacle now. And Moses appoints Beth, God appoints Bethsalel, the special craftsperson who will help build everything. And all the people begin to bring the things to build the Mishkan. They bring gold, silver, copper, sky blue wool, scarlet wool, dark red wool. And they bring all kinds of jewels and spices until finally Moses says, stop, you brought enough. We don't need any more. And they begin to build the tabernacle. And again, they, and they make the curtains, and they pour gold, and make the structure, and they make all the things that go inside it, the table, the altar, everything. And then in Pekudei, they actually make the priestly garments. Now, again, the little piece of wool that holds, holds the little piece that goes on top of the high priest's head has to be wool. It's made from a sheep. And again, we see all the kilim and all the instructions from God for anointing them. And at the very end of the book of Exodus, Sefer Shemot, the tabernacle is completed. And it lights up at night like a fire. And in the day, there's a cloud over it. And that's how the Israelites knew to move. Now, many people ask me, the first question, 